Hey map builders, it's Josh with Map Effects, and today I want to show you how to draw a mountain lake like this that looks like it's kind of tucked in or nestled in these mountains. It's a really cool feature to add to your maps because obviously life is dependent on water, so whenever you have lakes and rivers you'll tend to have settlements and villages and different things that pop up around it, and they can just become a real cool focal point on your fantasy map. So let's start mapping. So today I'm just going to be using the apprentice brushes that are available for free on the map effects website. And when you're drawing a lake on a fantasy map, there's a tendency to kind of draw it like this, as if you're looking down on it from an overhead or a top down perspective. But since when you draw mountains on your map, they're usually more in this like isometric perspective like this it ends up looking weird with the mountains because you kind of have two different perspectives that you have the overhead and the isometric. So basically what I want to do today is I want to show you how to draw a lake like this in more of an isometric perspective. And just to kind of give you a little bit of an idea on how you can do this is I'm just going to select this and with freeform transform selected, I'm just going to pull down on the top of it and you see that you end up with kind of this squashed look, but there's more horizontal movement to the lines than there is vertical. And this is actually what you want to use if you're drawing in an isometric perspective. So let's just clear this out for now. And if you were just drawing this from scratch or if you were using more of a traditional medium, you just kind of use this like sweeping motion as you're drawing. I'm exaggerating it right now, but you kind of use this sweeping motion that gives you those horizontal lines so then you kind of end up with more of that squashed look for the lake. And I just did this quickly. I don't like how flat this particular line is so I'm just going to kind of bring that down a little bit. We can erase to clean this up. And this is why it's always super important to sketch whenever you're drawing your map because it allows you to play with this and really refine the shape before committing to anything too early. And another thing you can do if you're working in Procreate or Photoshop, there should be some type of a liquify tool. And this allows you to kind of push things around a little bit. And really, you can make things a little bit more dramatic. Or if your perspective is a little off, you can kind of tweak it a little bit until you end up with something you're a little bit happier with. So we can just start with this basic lake shape. So how are we going to draw some mountains around this now? Well, what I like to do is I kind of look for places where I can add more depth and overlap because that gives the impression of the perspective. It, it helps convey a little bit more character to the map. So I'm seeing that this here is a place where the land juts out and it's an opportunity to draw in maybe a couple of mountains right there. Let me just erase away the shoreline so you can get an idea of what I'm doing. But you see that? We've created depth because now the shoreline comes around this way and tucks behind these mountains and now it's looking like the lake is more part of the landscape. So then if we look at some other inside points like this one here, whoops, I need to switch back to my ink. We can kind of sketch up and draw, sketch in a mountain like that. And do another one here and we don't have to have all the mountains directly next to the shoreline like this we can bring them back a little bit but you kind of see how these how I have them connected here but I kind of visually have them connected here because this line is pointing towards this so it just kind of gives the impression that all of this landscape is one piece instead of a bunch of individual mountains on top of the landscape then it becomes part of the landscape so if I created depth here, I also have an opportunity to do some of that here. So let's actually make it a little bit more dramatic this time. Oops. A little bit more dramatic by adding some taller mountains in the front here. I can bring these down a little bit. And you might notice that I work kind of sloppy uh, intentionally when I'm sketching because if I'm drawing everything too refined and perfect too early on, uh, I tend to get a little too precious with things. 
and I find that if you work really loose, it allows you to, to be a little bit more experimentative. You can try some things and push the boundaries a little bit more. So let's back this up a little bit more so we have some more room, but we can sketch in a mountain over here, connect this up, and let's have some more foothills coming this way. And what I'm kind of imagining here is that the river is kind of flowing down from this direction. And remember, we want to keep using that sweeping motion. And it's kind of the main river that's flowing into this lake. And But this is kind of a low area that is formed between the mountains. It's a, a valley. So this whole valley is starting to fill up with the water that's flowing from this main river. And then what you want to do is you kind of want to choose a potential outlet for your lake. It could be either on this side, kind of flowing out this way and coming out of the mountains, or you could also put it on this side. I think that would work too, and have it come out this way. So you, you can decide which you prefer. I think um, just due to composition, because I like the more horizontal, or excuse me, the more diagonal composition, I think I'm gonna put the outlet of the lake over here and just let it kind of sweep out this way. So then let's just come back in and refine this now. If we know our river is going to be here, let's have it come a little bit more to a point and still have it tucked behind this mountain range here. And let's put a couple mountains maybe up here, a little further back. We'll add some foothills, some smaller mountains over this way. And I don't, I'm not totally in love with the shape of the top of this, so I'm going to erase that, bring it down. Yeah, it's a little bit better. All right, so now we can continue to just kind of refine our sketch a little bit. Let's add some depth to our shorelines. I'll zoom in a little bit so you can see what I'm doing. But again, I'm looking for these inside corners and I'm kind of bringing the shoreline up here. And then if we want to give this some depth, we can just use some broken lines to create a little bit of an edge here on the shoreline. So we can just continue to do that around. But now, because of our perspective, this shoreline is facing that way. So you're not going to be able to see the face of the shoreline here. You could draw some lines that kind of come up towards the you as the viewer, kind of like this. You can have a corner, but again, we have another one here. So now that the shoreline has come down this way, we can see this edge. So we can add a little bit of a, a lip there. Or if we come up here, we have another one right there, right? So we can kind of just work our way around. And again, just work loose because you're probably going to change this and refine it a little bit. And then we can also draw in some of these ridge lines really fast on the mountains to kind of figure out where everything can go. So I'm thinking if this ridge line is coming down this way, let's have this jut out a little bit here instead of it being flat. And it creates a little bit of an edge, a little bit of overlap right like that, which makes this area a little bit more interesting. You can do, I think I want to do the same thing over here. Something like that. And I'm just going to finish sketching this in really fast, just so you can kind of get an idea of how this can look. All right, so that's kind of our, our basic sketch. And the other thing that you can do, um, I have the mountains pretty tight around this lake, but if you wanted to, you can draw some other additional rivers that are flowing into the lake. So let's just say you have another river coming down this way. Let's say it tucks behind this mountain here, kind of pops out on this side. So you have a, another river that's flowing into this lake. You could also throw another one over here 
because generally with lakes, they're a, a low point and all the rain is basically falling on these mountains and flowing into the low point of the lake. And then you'll end up with only one outlet. Sometimes you'll have two if there's seasonal flooding or things like that. But in general, you only want to have one outlet on your lake. So that's kind of our basic sketch. So let's move on now to inking. So I'm just going to take my sketch, lower the opacity of it. I'll keep it a little bit higher just so that you can see it. And then I'm just going to create a new layer above this. So if you were working with traditional pen and paper, you would just do this whole part with pencil. And now this is when you would be switching to a ink brush of some type or an ink pen. So now you can come in here. I'm just gonna zoom in a bit and you're just going to follow your sketch. And I generally kind of start with the mountains, just like this. You can kind of see that while I do follow my sketch, I'm following it loosely. I don't feel the need to be completely precise with it. All right, now once we have kind of our basic mountains in place, I'm going to follow the shoreline. Just like that. And usually I'll, I'll make the shoreline a little bit more jagged and interesting at this point. And I can also bring it out onto the river. And I think for this example, I'm just going to use a solid line for the river rather than having two smaller lines on either side, just for the sake of simplicity. And you'll notice that at my river mouths, I tend to make them come a little bit to a point. And just imagine that this is washing away the edges of the bank, so it kind of flows into the river a little bit nicer if you kind of bring it a little bit to a point. Don't always have to do that, but it's just something I like to do. Okay, and now that we kind of have our basic shapes, I'm going to just turn down this sketch even more, just so it's not so distracting. And now I'm gonna add in the ridge lines and some of the details on the shoreline itself. You can see that I'm still using kind of that sweeping motion as I'm drawing in these ridge lines. And then I like to either connect up with the shoreline or with an adjacent mountain. You can kind of see that a lot of um, drawing a lake is actually drawing the terrain around the lake, not so much the lake itself. <laughs> I feel like um, it's kind of ironic that I'm doing a tutorial on drawing a mountain lake and mostly what I'm drawing at this point has been mountains, but I'll show you in the next step how to, how to just add some quick wave lines to your lake to make it look a little bit more like water instead of just a blank patch.
All right, we're finally getting close. So let's turn off this sketch so we can see. And now you see we have all the terrain and the mountains all around it. Now let's add some wave lines to the lake to make it a little bit more clear that this is water, even without adding color or shading or anything like that. So to do that, we can just zoom in and I'm gonna start, let's start over here where I think it'll be a little bit easier to see. So what we're gonna do is we're going to follow this shoreline with some very light, thin, broken lines. And this is where you wanna be mindful of where the water would be hidden, the shoreline would be hidden by the rock that's in front of it. So this is an example where the mountain is kind of coming down. So this should tuck in behind here and you're really not gonna see the wave lines until they pop out again over here. And sometimes you have to just use artistic license. It, you would have to decide if technically this would be hidden or not. I'm going to add in just a little line there and a little line there. You'll find that you don't have to be absolutely precise, but you just kind of want to use some general rules. So once again, the water shoreline would be hidden behind these mountains. I'm going to say that just so you kind of have a continuous flow of the lines, I'm going to have it pop out here and just add a couple of just small lines there. Then we can keep going around. I like to use kind of more of a, a sketched look when drawing these wave lines. I know when I first started drawing maps, I would make these super precise lines that were all kind of like equal length and a little bit too bold and just perfectly follow the edge of the shoreline. I feel like that ends up looking kind of unnatural and rigid um, just because if you look at water, it's pretty organic. So I find using a little bit more sketched looking lines and a little bit thinner lines that aren't nearly so precise tends to look a little bit better, but that's just my artistic opinion. But again, you'll notice I tuck the lines behind these mountains and so you can't see them here. So now that we have this one row of lines around the outside, we can come back in and add a few more just to bring it out into the lake. So you could add a couple right there, maybe on the inside. A couple here. Oh, I don't like how that looked. Let's redo that one. Yeah, that's better. And now at this point, you're just kind of looking and figuring out how you can, that's a little too bold, how you can add just a little bit of texture and make this just look like flowing water. And if you want to, let's just decrease the size of the brush. You can also add in some out here, more in the middle of the lake. And again, you're, you're kind of using really thin broken lines. You're somewhat aware of the overall shape though. Just something like that. So just for the sake of being able to see this a little bit more clearly, let's come in and we'll add in a little bit of color just so you can get an idea of how I would do this. So just create a new layer below your line art and then I'm gonna to switch to the Rustic Wash, which is another one of the brushes in the free Apprentice Brush Pack that's on the website. And let's just move to this teal. See how dark this looks. It looks good. And if you're working digitally like I am, I like to just use a, a little bit larger brush and just fill this in, not being really that worried about staying in the lines. Something like that. And then you can decrease the opacity of this brush a little bit. And I'm going to make another pass. And really what I'm doing here is I'm darkening the water where the 
where the water would be deeper, really. You want it to look a little bit lighter, a little bit more shallow along the edges, but you can deepen the water like this. And then I'll switch to my smudge tool and switch to the brushed edges brush. Actually, let's make this a little bit smaller. And I don't want this to look too over blended, but, and that's part of the nice thing about this particular brush is it's got a lot of built in texture with it. So it doesn't end up looking too smooth in digital, but I still want this to kind of blend together a little bit and you can push the colors around and dial it in a little bit more. Okay. It's looking pretty good. So now let's just come in and erase away everything we don't want. And again, you don't have to be totally precise with this. If you go a little bit outside the lines, it kind of just gives it a little bit more character and makes it feel hand-drawn and more human. It doesn't look like AI did it, which I know is something that all of us would like to probably avoid. It's the subtle imperfections in your maps that make them look hand-drawn and give the human element that I think people appreciate. I know that Sometimes if I'm too precise with my work and the lines are a little bit too perfectly drawn, it looks digital and fake, and I find that people don't gravitate to it as much. There we go. We have something like this, and if you want to, you can come in here and play around with blend modes. If you want to switch it to multiply so that it kind of desaturates the background if you want more of that sepia tone, or, you, you know, you can keep it on normal. Whatever you want to do, you can go through and shade all the mountains and everything around. But this just kind of gives you an idea of how to draw a lake like this tucked in the mountains so that it, it feels like it's all in the right perspective and that the mountains and the lake are all connected. So I hope you found this helpful. And if you want to pick up these free brushes, they're available on the Map Effects website in the freebie section. And I look forward to seeing your map.